Hi, everybody. I hope you can see my screen and um, a warm welcome from me as well. And I have to say, Anna mentioned that we've uh, changed the setup here considerably and it's quite off-putting. We have done so many webinars over the years and uh, using headphones um, with all the paraphernalia. So doing this with microphones is very, very unusual. It's um, it's quite unsettling in a way, actually. It's, it's like a proper studio, boom, as Anna said, with boom mics, mics overhead and all the rest of it. But hopefully the reason we've done it is to try and give you the best audio because when you're using headphones, it's very, very easy to get a lot of knocking. When you're moving, you get uh, the cables banging against things. You also get um, quite a lot of wear on the jacks and all the rest of it. So it's quite annoying when you hear video with, with sort of tapping from time to time. It's very off-putting. So hopefully this is absolutely clean, uh, very high spec um, uh, mics. So hopefully the audio is coming through well. Just gonna move the chat box out of the way. Um, I thought I'd start with this one. I'll, I'll go on to a multiple workspace with, I've got cable up, which has been fantastic all day long. Um, but Anna mentioned the dollar and the uh, strength of buying in the dollar. This is on faster time frame. So basically on this workspace, I've got three currency matrix from the one minute, the three minute and the five minute. Over on the right hand side, I've got the currency array and I'll explain why I've got that as well. And then down at the bottom, I've got this really useful little tool from, this is comes from NinjaTrader itself. It's an FX correlation. It's not that um, uh, demonstrable in terms of the number of pairs. You can actually find one, I think, over on a site called mataf.net. Um, but this is pretty good. The reason I've got the matrix and the array up on the same workspace is because it's a question we get asked a lot is, what is the difference between the two indicators? What is the difference between the currency matrix and what is the difference between the currency array? Aren't they showing us the same things? Graphically, they are not, because clearly on one you have a table and on the other you have this demonstrable strength of trend, which appears on the array and is not available on the matrix. But the big difference between the two is this. The matrix is much more aligned to you as a scalping Forex trader the currency array is much more aligned if you are a trend trading forex trader or a swing trader, if you like. And the reason that is the case, if I just click on this and show you on the indicators, on the internals, the look back period you can see here on currency array is 80, which is quite a long way. In other words, it's looking back 80 uh, parts of whatever time frame you're looking at. If I do the same on the matrix, then this is looking back seven. So it just gives you an indication of the context that the indicator is looking at in how far back it's looking to deliver that particular data, which is why we say the matrix is much more aligned to, to really uh, sharp scalping at the very short end of the time frame, whereas the currency array steps back and takes a more considered view of the trend. If I just click on the dollar here to isolate it out, this is on five minute, but it gives you a perspective. You can see what we're looking for when we're trading. This is an ideal, this is what I call a full house. In other words, we've got all these three dollar pairs up at the top, and we've got the inverted dollar pairs down at the bottom here. So in other words, this is telling us that the dollar in the five minute time frame, or certainly around the five minute time frame, is still being bought very strongly and it's being bought most strongly in the dollar yen because that's the one that's got the steepest uh, inclination here, the steepest gradient. And then you've got the others, you might not be able to see it, but you've got New Zealand dollar, Aussie dollar, Euro dollar and cable. So the one that's being sold the heavily, most heavily at the moment is cable because it's down at the bottom here on the table, but it also gives you that sense of the strength of that, that gradient, the strength of that trend on the currency array. Now, in addition to that on the currency array, which you don't get on the currency matrix, is that on the right hand side, you have this little table alongside, which is giving you a heads up. This is not a signal, it's not a, it's not a get in signal, but it's just a heads up, an indicative sign that perhaps one of these currency pairs is reaching either an oversold or an overbought condition. You can see up here, we've got a darker color and we've got brackets around an OB. That's telling you that possibly it's approaching an overbought 
And if that currency pair reaches an overbought condition, it will go to bright blue and the brackets will disappear. Equally down at the bottom here, the uh, darker background will change to a bright red and the brackets will disappear. As I say, I, I, stre I, I, I stress the point. This is not a, a signal to get in. It's not um, um, uh, an EA. It's not uh, you know automatic. Oh, I must get in. That's that's my signal. It's purely telling you to go and look at the chart for a potential opportunity for a reversal. And that's really what it's telling you. It's potential. It's not get in, get out. It's potential. We move over onto the currency matrix. We've got a one minute, a three minute, and five minute. It's nice to have these across the time frames because then, then you can get a sense of what is going on. And if I click out, let's see what's, what we've got at the bottom. We've got quite a lot of euros down here. So let's just isolate out on the euro. There we go. And if we're seeing heavy selling, because the euro is always the primary currency in the pair, if we're seeing euro selling across the matrix, then ideally what we want to see is, is these two pairs join the others down the bottom here. So in other words, everyone is selling euro. At the moment, they're not. We've got a little bit divergence in terms of euro yen, perhaps less so in euro Swiss, and the euro dollar has just hopped up a couple of points off the bottom there. The most heavily negative at the moment, or the strongest trend, if you like, is in terms of euro Aussie down at the bottom here. We've got euro Aussie at the bottom on one. We've got euro Aussie at the bottom on three. And we've got euro Aussie at the bottom here. It's well near the bottom 26 spot on five minutes. So, you know, that's a nice pair to be looking at. Now, clearly, you're looking at it either for continuation of that trend, for that to develop further. And if you had a 15 minute or 10 or 15 minutes on the matrix, maybe the euro Aussie might be up here somewhere and you're looking for it to climb further down here. That's it just depends on your perspective. The reason that the matrix is so important is because what you're trying to do as a trader is trade with the market sentiment for that particular pair. What you don't want to be doing is trading in Euro Aussie, which may well be a short position. But if everyone else is buying the Euro, then you are essentially paddling your canoe against the the, the weight of the market. Now, there may be a good reason to, to do that, and it happens many times because local politics or local fundamental news or local news of, of whatever description can often dominate a currency, whereas the bulk of the market is doing something completely different elsewhere around the globe. That's perfectly fine, as long as you appreciate that's what you're doing. I mean, it's happened innumerable times on, on the pound, for example, over recent years with Brexit, with the fallout in Europe, um, politics, all the rest of it. Um, it happens that you will get cable going in one direction, which is actually contra to what the other majors are doing in terms of what the dollar may be doing. And you'll see things like the pound and dollar rising together, pound and dollar falling together, you know, out of sync with what else is happening. But that's part and parcel. And that's the reason the mate, we developed the matrix in the first place, to give you that view on the sentiment for the currency that you are trading in the context of all the other pairs within the matrix. One of the things that we added to this uh, indicator, which we've got on trading view, we've got it on trade section. I don't think we've put it on, on MetaTrader yet. We will do once we get clear of the stock trading program, we will catch up with all these things and bring all the indicators up to the same level. Is we've actually added these uh, bars at the top and bottom, which give you an indication of whether the values here are approaching extremes or whether they are way off those extremes. And when I say extremes, you've got to remember in terms of the look back period. So we're only talking about seven, I think it was seven or eight look back on here. But you can see here the highest one here so far in that period has been 10.8. At the moment, this is 6.3. So you can infer from that that we're not at a peak, we're not at a high. So there is some way to go, whereas with the Euro Aussie down here at 549, that's the lowest it's been, jacked up a little bit now, 577 is the lowest. And that just gives you a, an indication. It's like on the CSI where you see extremes and you think, oh, OK, well, potentially we're at an extreme here. So it just gives you a, a flavor of what that value is. It gives you contextual uh, 
um, a contextual value against which to judge where we are. Pretty quickly, you get to know whether 10 up here, 15 or 20 is a high number, uh, and you see much higher numbers across all these time frames. Obviously, the session we're in, you know, we're we're an hour and a half towards the end of the U.S. session, so we're well out of London. Europe's closed, so we're just trading really the the sort of last quarter of the U.S. session here, and these numbers are much lower than they would normally be. So you get you get to know that anyway when you use the indicators regularly. So we put these in these in develop these just to give context, and you can isolate in and out as you can on the array. So let's just click that one back on very quickly before I pass back to Anna. As I say, I mentioned this little tool down here, FX Correlation. It's a very handy thing. And what it reminds us of is the fact that when you think of the majors, you think that they all march to the same step, and they don't. And it really depends how far out of correlation they are. I've got this on the hour. I'll knock it back to the day in a moment. When you look at it on the hour, if you look at something like the Aussie dollar as compared to cable, for example, and if you take as a, a broad benchmark, if you like, of correlation, if you say that, well, really anything um, below 0.8 on a positive is really not that strongly correlated. I mean, you can go, some people say 0.85 or even 0.9, but let's call it 0.8 for argument's sake. The Aussie dollar and, and cable, as you can see, there's a decent correlation there on the hour. So yeah, not too bad. But when you look at Aussie dollar and Euro dollar, there's no correlation at all. It's a meaningless, meaningless number. It means there is no correlation there whatsoever between those two pairs. You can also look at it in the context of dollar CAD. Obviously, it's inverse here and dollar Swiss and dollar yen, absolutely nothing. So it, it, it just gives you a view, a sense and reminds you that, yeah, whilst you, we normally expect all pairs, all majors, for example, to move at the same at the same pace, this is definitely not the case. And you will find this all over the place. So when you look at euro dollar, You've got the the uh, the opposite down here. You've got euro dollar 48. You've got 48 over here. So you'll see the same things replicated over here. You can look at dollar CAD, for example. Dollar CAD, how inverse related to Aussie dollar? Yeah, it's okay. Uh, what about dollar CAD to dollar Swiss? Absolutely nothing. And if you take the dollar yen, it's all over the place. Now that's on the hour. If we flick it over onto the day, for example, and then I'll pass back to Anna. When you look at it on the day, it's perhaps more meaningful. You get a better sense of, of correlation because if you look at euro dollar and cable here, that's a pretty strong correlation with Aussie dollar. So that's nice to see. Dollar CAD, you can see, is minus 0.91. So very strong there, inverse, obviously, because it's upside down. And the same with the dollar Swiss. And even with the dollar yen, there's pretty good correlation there. So what it tells you is that on the hourly basis, in other words, intraday, you will get correlations coming and going, tightening and slackening off all the time. But looking at it over a longer term perspective, then generally these are holding pretty good at the moment. The interesting one always to look at is Euro dollar and dollar Swiss, which is this one here. And that one is it's still holding good. It always has been pretty good. It's it's not quite unity, but it's generally there or thereabouts. And you can see at the moment that that is still maintaining that that inverse relationship, which has always been the case. And one of the things which that helps us to look at when we're looking at volume price analysis, it's always nice to look at an upside down version of volume. In other words, when you're trading euro, have the dollar Swiss, because if you've got good, good inverse correlation like that, then looking at the volume in an inverse way, in other words, almost the chart upside down, if you like, it gives you a completely different perspective. So what you'll see in a hammer on a euro dollar, for example, would be a shooting star on a dollar Swiss. And it's a really nice way of just inverting volume and looking at it from a different perspective. It's the same market, it's the same currency pair, it just happens to have a good correlation, but it just helps to see things differently when you're looking at it from two different perspectives, a mirror image, if you like, of the two pairs. Mm -hmm.